After helping the Texas Rangers win a World Series in 2023, Mitch Garver has decided to join the Seattle Mariners on a two-year deal with a mutual option for a third year. And in his role with the Seattle Mariners, which will seemingly be a DH only, he'll have his best opportunity up to this point to stay healthy and prove why when he's healthy, he is one of the better hitters in baseball. And especially on hitting the four-seam fastball. In 2023, he had a 333 batting average against this pitch, a 667 slug, and a hard hit percentage of 61.1%. And believe it or not, as Mike Petriello points out here, from 2019 through 2023, excluding the 2020 season, this is a leaderboard of the best hitters against four seam fastballs with a minimum of 250 plate appearances. And you guessed it, Mitch Garber is right on top. This is filtered by WOBA, which is weighted on base average. It's a version of on base percentage, which accounts for how a player reaches base. But instead of simply considering whether a player reaches base, it considers how they reached base. And so even though Juan Soto's batting average and on base percentage is higher than Mitch Garver's on four seam fastballs, because Mitch Garver's slug is so high against the four seam fastball and the way he gets on base, his WOBA is higher than Soto, higher than Aaron Judge, Bryce Harper, Jordan Alvarez, and the list goes on. Day, and he hammers the ball out to center field. That takes Duran back to the wall. It is gone! Garver's approach at the plate is built around being selective, and when he does decide to swing, doing as much damage as possible. Last year, his chase rate was in the 98th percentile of all hitters, chasing at just 17.4% of pitches outside the zone. He had a walk rate of 12.8%, which was in the 90th percentile of all hitters last year, a barrel rate in the 83rd percentile, expected slugging in the 87th percentile, and his overall batting run value was in the top 11% of all of hitters. He has dealt with his fair share of injuries throughout the years. After all, you'd expect as much being an MLB catcher. But let's get into the story of Mitch Garver and how he got to this point. But before we do, if you're enjoying the content, make sure to like and subscribe to The Couch GM, as over the past month, over 70% of the total watch time have been from people who are not yet subscribed. And go check out the rest of the player profile series after this video, and let me know in the comments who I should cover next. Mitch Garver was born and raised in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where he would go on to attend La Cueva High School. He was a star baseball and soccer player throughout high school, and he would lead both teams to a state championship his junior year of high school. And he was such a standout center back that his coach actually tried convincing him to leave America and go play soccer at a European level. He said that he considered it for about a week. He said he had the body and the size to be able to play at the European level. Mitch stated, and you know when you're 17 years old, that's kind of a huge life-changing decision. So I was veering towards the side of playing it safe, and that's what I did. And, you know, I ended up going to college, played baseball, and it's worked out pretty well for me. In baseball, of course, he was a catcher. His senior year, he would play in 31 games, bat 521 with 10 home runs and 54 RBIs. And although he wasn't a highly touted prospect at the time, he would go on to play for the Lobos at the University of New Mexico. He would earn the starting catching role heading into his sophomore year in 2011. And by the time he was done at the University of New Mexico, he would be known as one of the best Lobos of all time. He was named Mountain West Co-Player of the Year his senior year. He became the University of New Mexico's all-time Ironman by starting in 181 straight games. His senior year, he batted 390, led the team with 96 hits, had a 26-game hitting streak, and for the second straight year, he was named a Johnny Bench Award finalist, which is handed out to the nation's top catcher. And the head coach stated that Garver is the greatest catcher in Lobo history. He was also named to the University of New Mexico's All-Decade team alongside his current Mariners teammate, Sam Haggerty. Mitch would be drafted in the ninth round of the 2013 MLB Draft by the Minnesota Twins. At the time, he was known as a bat-first catcher, so he had some work to do in order to show that he could be a consistent starting catcher. He would start out in rookie ball in 2013, and over the next four years, he would continue to progress through the minors. Each step of the way, he had no issue with hitting. A bit of a tangent, but when Mitch was playing for the Chattanooga Lookouts in 2016, back when they were affiliated with the Twins, Mitch Garver's roof collapsed on him, and here's a tweet he put out seeking a room for the final two months of the season. Yikes. 
He would progress to AAA in 2017. Over 372 plate appearances that year, he batted 291 with a 387 on base percentage, a 928 OPS, including 17 home runs, which was third in the Twins organization. Garver belts that one. Forget it. Garver gives the Wings the 1 0 lead, homering off the tent. He would be named the Twins Daily Minor League Hitter of the Year in both 2014 and 2017. And around that time, he stated, I've always been tabbed as an offense first catcher who may not be able to defend at the major league level. I think I've shown people I can be a good receiver, I can block the ball, and I can control a game and a pitching staff. Then, in August 2017, Byron Buxton and Robbie Grossman had a collision in the outfield. It turns out that Robbie Grossman fractured his thumb. He would be placed on the injured list, and Mitch Garver would be getting the call. He would play in 23 games in his first exposure in the big leagues, spreading time between catcher, first base, and even outfield. Mitch Garver would start out the 2018 season in a platoon role at catcher, and in his first game played of the year, he would take a backswing by Manny Machado to the back of the head. He would avoid a concussion, but he would have a bone bruise on his skull, requiring him to miss a couple games. But shortly after, on April 5th, would come his first career home run against none other than the Seattle Mariners. To the corner and gone! Garver's first Major League home run! He would secure the Twins' starting role at catcher by mid-May. In over 102 games that season, he batted 268 with a 335 on base percentage, a 749 OPS, which is a 104 OPS plus, finishing with seven home runs and 45 RBIs. This was a small glimpse at what would be coming in 2019. During the offseason between 2018 and 2019, Mitch made a few changes both at the plate as well as behind the plate. When stepping into the batter's box, he made a significant change. He increased his percentage of pulled balls in play from 34.5 to 47.8% and increased his launch angle from 12.7 to 15.3 degrees. And the reason for this change was purely science. He said, you look at the numbers on home runs hit over the last 10 seasons. I'd say 70% of them are to the pull side, 15 or 20% are to dead center, and then a small percentage are to the opposite field. I built my swing to hit pull side loft. And speaking to the science, he's basically describing launch angle, a methodology for optimal trajectory for hitting home runs. This article states that Garver blended science, baseball analytics, and common sense in devising the approach that produced a Babe Ruth-like 31 home runs in just 311 at-bats this year. Twins manager stated of Garver that he covers a lot of these different parts of the zone and again, because he's pretty selective as far as what he's doing up there, I think he's a nightmare in a lot of ways for guys on the mound. And a nightmare is what he was in 2019. As I mentioned, he hit 31 home runs in just 311 at bats, 359 plate appearances. And in 2019, he had played in 93 games. He finished with a 365 on base percentage, a 995 OPS, which was a 157 OPS plus. And in that season, he was on a 162 game pace of hitting 54 home runs. This would net him a Silver Slugger award for the catcher position in 2019. His OPS of 995 was the sixth highest in Twins history for a player with at least 350 plate appearances. As I mentioned, he also made some changes after the 2018 season behind the plate. In this footage from 2018, you'll notice that he's crouched behind home plate on both feet. One of the perceived downsides in his play up to that point was his ability to be able to frame pitches, specifically the low pitches. You'll notice his new stance here in a later year, in which he's on one knee in his stance. This allows him to be able to get lower and to frame those lower pitches. And you can see in these playbacks, he's stealing some of those low strikes. His glove isn't having to move much since he's already down there, which to the umpire makes it look more like a strike. Then in mid-May, Shohei Otani slid into Mitch Garver at home plate, and Garver would suffer a high ankle sprain requiring him to miss a few weeks. He would end up playing in 93 games total in 2019. He would follow up his career year in 2019 with a career low year in 2020. He would only play in 23 games that season and batted 167 with a 247 on base percentage, just a 42 OPS plus. He also saw his strikeout and pop-up percentages balloon drastically. As you'd imagine, a lot of players were affected by the delay to the start of the season, and this, combined with an intercostal strain that Mitch Garver was dealing with the second half of the season, 
which is an injury to the ribs in the breathing section, caused him to record an outlier of a low season in 2020, which is why these numbers were excluded from that first stat earlier in the video. Garver would start out the 2021 season strong with an 840 OPS through the first two months. Before at the start of June, he would suffer a severe groin contusion which would require emergency surgery, and this would put him down for a month and a half of the season. Later in the year, he would miss another month with lower back tightness. He would still manage to have a productive year at the plate, finishing with a 256 batting average and 875 OPS, which was a 139 OPS plus, along with 13 home runs and 34 RBIs through just 68 games played that year. He was on a 162 game pace of 30 home runs. What a Tortuga. Mitch Garver blasts that baseball and it is gone. Wow. After the 2021 season, the Texas Rangers would make a trade for Mitch Garver. They would send shortstop Isaiah Kiner Falefa and right handed pitcher Ronnie Enriquez to the Twins. In his first year with the Rangers, he had a league average year. His batting average was just 207, 298 on base percentage, a 702 OPS, which was a 102 OPS plus. He hit 10 home runs with 24 RBIs, which again was a 30 home run pace, assuming 162 games played. To left. That one is gone! He missed 108 of the Rangers games in 2022, mainly from an injury in his flexor tendon in his right arm. If you think back to Robbie Ray's injury in spring training 2023, he had a flexor tendon strain, which ended up needing season ending surgery, essentially like Tommy John. Mitch Garver went on the IL in mid-May for this reason, was on the COVID IL later in the year, and then about halfway into July, Mitch Garver decided to have season ending surgery to repair that flexor tendon. This would give him the best shot to be healthy for spring training heading into the 2023 season. It's also worth noting that Mitch Garver was a DH only after going to the IL that first time for the flexor strain. Without getting that repaired, there was no more catching. Now moving into the 2023 season, Mitch Garver made it six games before again hitting the injured list. This time he was rounding first base, heading to second, and he tweaked his knee. He would end up missing 49 games during this IL stint. But again, when healthy, Mitch Garver did his thing at the plate. He played in 87 games in 2023 with a 270 batting average of 370 on base percentage, an 870 OPS, which was a 134 OPS plus. He hit 19 home runs and 50 RBIs over those games, which was a 35 home run pace over 162 games played. And after winning the World Series with the Rangers, he's now appeared in the postseason in three separate seasons, two with the Twins and one with the Rangers. And in this deal with the Mariners, he's getting his payday, and the Mariners are getting a potential true impact hitter at a bargain. Garver has made $10.5 million throughout his career so far, and in his first year with the Mariners, he'll be making more than he has in his entire career. And as Luke Arkins points out, since Mitch Garver debuted in 2017, his 123 OPS Plus ranks 29th among right-handed hitters with at least 1,500 plate appearances. He's right up there with Carlos Correa, Austin Riley, Luis Robert Jr., Xander Bogarts, Reese Hoskins, and another Mariners rumored target of Randy Arozarena. Since 2021, Mariners DHs have collectively ranked 29th in batting average and on-base percentage, as well as 26th in slugging. Mitch Garver can be a significant upgrade at DH. In 2023, Mitch Garver's 17.4% chase rate was 9th lowest among 319 hitters, seeing at least 500 pitches outside the zone, which beat out the best eye on the Mariners 2023 team and JP Crawford. And Mitch Garver's 12.8% walk rate tied for 30th best in Major League Baseball, which would have only been behind JP Crawford who led the American League in walks. When Mitch Garver is healthy, he's one of the better hitters in baseball. And when Mitch Garver is not behind the plate catching, he'll likely be more healthy, leading to more consistent production. Thank you for watching and make sure to like and subscribe to the Couch GM for more content like this. And let me know in the comments what you think about the Mitch Garver signing and let me know who I should cover in my next player profile video.